everybody, Swayze here, and today I have the honor and the pleasure to review one of the hottest, if not the hottest vehicle of the year. And of course, we're talking the 2022 F-150 Lightning. Now, if you guys are not familiar with what this vehicle is, it is the first ever all electric F-150. And it's really arguably one of the first mass market electric pickup trucks. And today's video, we're gonna be discussing over 30 fun, cool, interesting, odd features that make this vehicle so special. And then later on in the video, I'm also gonna compare this vehicle to the Rivian R1T, which I reviewed a couple months ago. And I'm gonna put that video up on the screen and down in the description below so you guys can check it out after watching this one. But without further ado, let's get started and talk about all of the cool features of the first ever electric F-150. Now, before we get started, I wanna give a huge thank you to Ken Garf West Valley Ford for giving me the opportunity to review this vehicle for you all today. They have, as you can tell, an amazing, Amazingly large inventory of new and used vehicles, including the F-150 Lightning, the Ford Bronco. So if you guys are in the market for a new Ford vehicle or really anything on their lot, make sure you reach out to them. I'm going to put their information down in the description below and let them know that Schwazy sent you. Okay, so let's start talking about the F-150 Lightning. It's really the talk of the town. Everybody can't stop talking about this vehicle because it's the first to the market. Now, the Rivian R1T was technically first, but it's not a mass market truck. It's kind of a lifestyle vehicle and it's more of a luxury vehicle than say kind of a pickup truck because its bed length was only four and a half feet or so. And so to have a real true full-size truck, you kind of need a bed of at least five and a half feet. And that is what this vehicle comes with. But we'll talk about that in a minute. The only other real competitor that's out on the market technically is the Hummer EV. Although the big caveat to that is that vehicle costs as much as a Lamborghini. So I don't really know if it's attainable or mass market and they're not really building very many of them. Ford actually assumes this is going to make up a big proportion of all F-150 sales, which is the hottest vehicle every single year. Now, starting off, you can get four trim levels on the F-150 Lightning. The base version is called the Pro, and it's kind of similar if you're familiar with F-150 trims to the XL trim level. It's the cheapest. It comes with the bare bone stuff, but it does a lot of cool things, and I'll talk about the range and all of the power here in a minute. That truck starts just under $40,000, which is truly incredible for a four-door, five-and-a-half-foot pickup truck that's all electric. Now, if you do want to step up, this particular trim is the highest trim level. It's called the Platinum, similar to the regular F-150. And believe it or not, this vehicle costs over $90,000. So if you do have a little bit of spending money, you can upgrade to the Platinum. You'll get all the bells and whistles, which we'll show in today's video. Now, the other two trim levels that I haven't discussed is there's the XLT, which is just right above the Pro, and the Lariat, which is just below this Platinum. So in my opinion, I think the Lariat is probably the one to go to because it comes with a lot of cool features inside and out. You still got nice interior, beautiful exterior. You still got that beautiful lighting, but it comes at a slightly lower price point. It starts at just around $67,000 for the Lariat. As you can tell, this one in particular has the black exterior color, and we're going to tease the inside for just a moment. We'll step in here later on in the video, but you do have this beautiful leather interior. Looks just like a Lincoln or something like that, and you've got platinum written over here. So very very nice interior, really nice materials, but we'll touch on that later in the video. So let's still talk about the size of this vehicle because some people may be wondering, is this really any different than an F-150? And the answer to that is no, not really. From the front to the back, you're just around 233 inches. And this really is a half ton, full-size pickup truck, just like the F-150. One major difference that I want to point out is this is the first ever F-150 to have independent rear suspension. So there's no solid axle like you find on typical F-150s, uh, and there's no leaf springs either. This is an independent four-wheel suspension. I'm curious to see how this will drive on the road because it should be a little bit more smoother, more similar to a crossover vehicle. And I think that might be one of the reasons that this thing is going to sell so well and convert a lot of people from just regular crossovers to vehicles like this is because it's going to ride better than a typical pickup truck. Now let's briefly talk about how they were able to get this vehicle to the market so quickly because they really only announced it about a year and a half ago and here we are in July of 2022 and I'm standing in front of one and this dealership has already delivered quite a few of them to customers. So how do they do it so quick? Well the answer to that is they really went a little bit of a different route than some of the other automakers. They didn't end up developing an entirely new platform for this vehicle. This is a 
essentially very similar to a regular F-150. You've got a fully boxed in steel frame and the battery and the motor components are kind of intermingled throughout that frame. So it's a little bit different than a traditional electric vehicle, even like a Tesla or the upcoming Silverado EV. So by doing so, they're able to manufacture this in the same types of facilities that they manufacture the other F-150s and other electric vehicles. And so that allows them to manufacture this vehicle a lot quicker and it should be able to keep up with the demand. Okay, next we have to talk about one of the most important things you need to consider when you're buying an electric vehicle and that has to do with range and in order to do that you push on this little charging port door and it pops open. Okay, now speaking of range, you can get two different battery sizes on this vehicle. You can get a 98 kilowatt hour standard range battery, and that will get you about 230 miles of range. Now, if you guys get the sub $40,000 lighting, that's the battery that you come with. But if you choose to upgrade to the extended range battery, which this vehicle comes with, that's gonna be about $10,000, regardless of what trim level you choose. That's about a $10,000 option. But with that, you get 130 31 kilowatt battery then get you up to 320 miles of range that's really competitive to the Rivian R1T now keep in mind depending on what features and specs your vehicle comes with your range may be affected so Ford says that this platinum version with all of the bells and whistles is actually a reduced range to just 300 miles although the owner of this vehicle tells me that when they were driving this a few nights ago when it was pretty cool at night and kind of cool in the mornings and it was fully charged. The computer was telling them they can go up to about 320 miles. So it's not an exact perfect science to it. It really depends on how you drive, but you can get somewhere between 300 to 320 miles with this extended range battery. Now, a little Easter egg I noticed as I was closing the charge port door is this little Henry Ford on a Model T, I presume. It says 1913. And that's a really cool Easter egg, nice touch. I have heard that there's a few of those located throughout the vehicle and that's essentially a throwback back to obviously the Model T and this is arguably kind of the next generation of the Model T because it's the first ever electric pickup truck. Now in terms of charging it's not necessarily as good as some of the competition but that has to do with the fact that hey this is a very first generation of an F-150 Lightning. Now charging times if you use the DC fast charger at Electrify America stations Ford says you can do up to 54 miles in just 10 minutes of charging. Now if you do charge at home at night like many people do and depending on what trim level you get and what battery you get, Ford will provide something they call the Ford Charge Station Pro, and that can charge your vehicle from 15 to 100% in just about eight hours. So you can get about 100% of charge in one night. Now, one of the main advantages of this vehicle over say a Cybertruck or maybe a Hummer EV is this actually looks like a pickup truck. If you didn't really know any better, you would assume this is just a regular F-150. The only item to point out is this light bar, which is seen amongst a lot of electric pickup trucks trucks and it's kind of becoming a trend. But other than that, you just have these dual LED headlamps. You have this really nice looking grill on this platinum edition. It's kind of got this gloss black to it. Obviously you don't need a grill because you don't need to cool down an engine on an electric vehicle, but it's still a nice touch. It makes it look more like a traditional pickup truck and that's really what they were going here aside from that there's really not much more to discuss down here at the bottom you do have two tow hooks which is nice to have and parking sensors on the front on the side that's really where this vehicle looks no different than a conventional f-150 you do have side steps over here to be able to help you get into and out of the vehicle and then coming down to the wheels they are more aerodynamic than the traditional f-150 but then again it's not something you would immediately notice driving down the road coming to the back again traditional f-150 features i do like like this light bar over here that kind of matches the front end goes all the way across to the other side and lights up really nice at night you do have your reverse blinkers here but without further ado let's talk about the truck features of this vehicle because you buy this vehicle because it is a truck. And so how does it perform in that aspect? Well, starting off, we're gonna open up the tailgate and the F-150 Lightning has the traditional Ford key. This is the same key I have on my Ford Bronco and you do have some cool options. So if you double click this button, the tailgate will automatically open. And that's not a new feature. I've seen that on F-150s before, but nonetheless, nice to have on this electric version of the pickup truck. So as you can see, it's automatic lift and lower, or you can push the button if I can find it here. 
and it will open up for you as well. Coming to the tailgate here, this is the F-150 revised tailgate because they have lots of functionality here. You've got a ruler over here in centimeters and in inches. You've got a place you can put your phone. You've got a place you can put some pencils, a cup holder. So lots of functionality here. And then you can actually put a C-clamp by kind of threading it through here and attaching plywood or whatever surface you want to cut and attaching it directly to the tailgate. Really good functionality there. Great for a work site if you're a contractor or you need that kind of stuff. And then if you want a beer at the end of the day, you do have a bottle opener located here as well. You do still have the easy to access step that you can use and it has this handlebar as well. And that will give you access into the truck bed without having to climb in all over the tire or on top of the tailgate. Now getting into the truck bed, this does have the spray in bed liner. Of course, this is the platinum, the highest trim level. You do have nice tie downs located all throughout and you do have lighting over here as well. So if it's dark at night, you have the lights turn on, you have a great view of the truck bed. Now this is kind of a unique feature and somewhat new to F-150s, but definitely to the lightning and this is your pro power on board and what this allows you to do is plug in lots of different devices you have a 240 volt you have your traditional 120 volt and 20 amp max you have uh, your buttons here to power the devices so what this means is you can get to a campsite or a job site and actually power your power tools using the battery located in the vehicle and the other cool feature about this is you may be worried that well what if I end up draining my entire your battery by using the power tools and I'm not able to get home. Well, Ford thought ahead of that because inside of the center instrument cluster, you can actually adjust at what point it cuts off power to all of the power outlets in the vehicle. And these aren't the only ones. I'm going to point out some of the other ones this vehicle comes with, but really smart, really nice feature to have and really adds to the utility of this vehicle. And it's starting to become a little bit more of a common feature on pickup trucks, but I am definitely glad they threw this in on the all electric F-150 pickup. Another cool touch to point out over here is I believe these are your reverse lights and so when you are with the tailgate down you have something loaded let's say a large ATV or something because your reverse lights are located on the tailgate itself you can actually keep the tailgate down but still have these reverse lights light up when you're pulling the vehicle back I wonder if that's a government regulation but regardless a nice touch because when you do close the tailgate they actually disappear out of view because you're covered up by the metal on the tailgate itself another little Easter egg I discovered is you have the f-150 logo located located right here on the taillight itself. Just a nice little touch makes it a little bit different and unique. Now, speaking of the truck, we have to talk about towing capacity and payload because that's one of the most important reasons to buy a pickup truck. Well, with the extended range battery, you can get upwards of 10,000 pounds in towing capacity on the F-150. Now, if you choose the standard battery, it's 7,700 pounds of towing capacity. Now, in terms of payload, that really depends on a lot of different things. How you spec your vehicle really makes a difference on how much payload you can have. But Ford says you can get upwards of 2,000 pounds in payload capacity. This particular truck in the Platinum Edition with all of the bells and whistles has just around 1,652 pounds of payload, which isn't bad and pretty standard amongst most pickup trucks, especially of this size. Now, in case you're wondering if you can get this in any other type of configuration, uh, the answer is no, not at this time. Uh, now, Ford hasn't said they're not going to release any other types of versions, but I think given the size of the battery needed to run this vehicle for at least 230 to 300 miles, they needed to make it this type of length. So it's five and a half foot bed and you've got four doors. So I think this is probably the best-selling version of the F-150 and so they wanted to start out with this one but they may make different configurations in the future. Okay now before we jump inside and talk about the interior I want to briefly talk about the off-road capabilities of the F-150 Lightning. Now Ford didn't actually design this to be an off-road vehicle. Uh, it's going to be less capable than the Rivian R1T. That's just kind of a known fact. That one has air suspension. That one has four motors so one for each wheel but that doesn't mean that it's not capable off-road. Now in case you were wondering this vehicle has about 8.4 inches of ride height and in addition to that Ford did something really clever and interesting and they added a rear mechanical locking differential so this vehicle actually does have a rear locker which allows it to go on some of the more extreme off-road trails because then you have the confidence of being able to pretty much get yourself out of a rut and that feature actually comes on every single trim level of the truck another item to point out is you do get upwards of two feet of water fording 
Fording, get it? In the F-150 Lightning, that is below the approximately three feet in the Rivian R1T. But again, this isn't meant to compete with the Rivian in terms of off-road capabilities. I will also mention that they do have some skid plates located underneath the motor, so you don't damage those when you're going off-road. You may have noticed it when I was showing you uh, the differential in the back earlier. Now, another reason that this vehicle isn't really designed for off-road is because of the tires. These are 275 by 50 all-terrain general grabber tires wrapped around around 22 inch wheels on a pickup truck. Now, as you can see, the tread isn't really meant to be off-road. It's just meant for comfort, for uh, ride quality, and most important, efficiency. If you want the best range, you really gotta focus on tires and wheels. And while 22s don't help that much, the width of the tire and the tread pattern does make a big difference. Okay, now for the moment you've been waiting for, and I may have been waiting for it longer because it's 95 degrees outside, we're gonna get inside and show off all of the cool remaining features of this amazing pickup truck. Now, first off, I want to talk about the material quality. Uh, obviously, with this being a 90 plus thousand dollar pickup truck, you expect to have premium materials in the cabin and that does not disappoint. You do have really nice soft touch leather material up here. Uh, you do have an Alcantara suede material right here, more soft touch. The door panel in general is very, very high quality. You do have hard touch plastic down here, but that's expected for a pickup truck. Lots of storage over here, more storage located down below the door handle. As traditional F-150, you do have the door handle located over here in this little pocket. Nice window switches, typical Ford items, same with over here. You do have this nice, I think this is real wood texture to it. Uh, really nice touch and that carries out throughout the cabin as well. Uh, now looking at the door, you do have platinum written over here so you can show off what vehicle you actually got. This isn't just some pro version. I did show the seats a little bit earlier, but I'll give you another glance. This one does come with the Bang & Olufsen sound system, and you do have speakers built into the headrest over here, so that adds a little bit of nice touch when you're driving down the road. Now, coming over here, you do have, again, more soft touch material over here. It's not super soft, but it is wrapped in a leather-like material. Really nice stitching coming down over here, uh, and same up here. Now, before we move further in, I want to show you what's located down in this section, your typical F-150 and Ford lighting information. You got your parking brake. You can adjust your pedals located down here to make them a little bit closer to you or further away. And then this is how you open up your frunk and your tailgate, which we'll show you the frunk here in just a minute. And you can turn on your side view mirror lighting. So getting into the cabin, you do have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Now, one thing I will knock forward on is this over here is hard touch plastic. Now, for being a 90 plus thousand dollar vehicle, uh, most luxury vehicles that I test, this is soft touch material. And I get this is a pickup truck, it's meant to be utilitarian, but I think 90 grand, this should be done a little bit better. Now, what you can see blinking over here and the same on the driver's side on this pillar over here. This is the Blue Cruise system from Ford. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the, what that is, that is essentially the level two self-driving feature that comes with the F-150 Lightning. But this essentially monitors your eyes when you're driving down the road and allows you to take your hands off the steering wheel and allow the vehicle to steer on certain highways. Now, keep in mind, this isn't on every single road. It's not like a Tesla where it will actually monitor the traffic everywhere you go. This is only only on predefined routes, but it is likely on major interstates. So if you're doing a long haul road trip, you can turn the Blue Cruise system on. These little lights will monitor your eyes and that way you can let your hands off the steering wheel and the vehicle will actually accelerate, decelerate and follow the lane as you're driving down the road. Okay, now let's turn this vehicle on so I can actually start cooling down. And you do have this cool graphic that turns on and the vehicle is on. There's obviously no internal combustion engine. There's no vibration. It just tells you, hey, the vehicle is on and ready to go. Now, all F F-150 Lightnings do come with this 12 inch digital display. And I apologize for the lighting here. It's uh, just kind of the angle, but you do have a really nice graphical display here that has uh, quite a few features. Now, as you can see, this vehicle has 247 miles of range. And according to the center screen, it says that's 88%. So you guys can do the math to figure it out. It is a very hot day. So obviously that's going to impact your range. Now coming over to the steering wheel, it is a standard F-150 steering wheel. It's leather wrapped. It's got really nice stitching over 
over here looks really good. On the right hand side, you have your buttons to control the center screen. Coming down here, you do have your phone information and your audio seek and track buttons. And then on the left hand side, you do have your volume controls and you have your adaptive cruise control and blue cruise, which is what I talked about earlier. If you don't upgrade for the blue cruise system, you still get a lot of safety tech and nannies uh, when you're driving down the road, like lane keep assist, like adaptive cruise control. Now coming closer before we address this giant screen, you do have your pro trailer assist, which is how you can essentially allow the vehicle to memorize whatever trailer you're driving and you can actually back up the trailer using this knob over here instead of using the steering wheel like old school pickup trucks. Now coming down here, you have your trailer brake control, which is typical among all F-150s. And then uh, before we jump to the center screen, I want to talk about this section down here. You do have this really nice wood material that has kind of a texture to it. It raises up over here on the sides, but opening this up opens up your wireless charger. You got some USB ports and just a nice storage bin, and then you can hide it out of plain sight. You do have a place here for your phone, which is nice. And then this one does come with the lower of the gear selector because this vehicle has the workstation. So you can open up your center arm console. You can put a laptop here, some lunch, whatever have you, and then close it up when you're done with the day and then remind yourself that you do have the platinum. This is leather wrapped. You do have cup holders over here in a place you can put your wallet. Uh, very similar F-150 stuff. And then obviously you have a large center arm console underneath here. I'm not going to open it because there's personal belongings in here and this is not my vehicle to show. Now coming over here on the right hand side of the screen, you do have a 12 volt power adapter and just your typical 120 volt adapter household plug, which is nice to have for charging devices. On the right hand side, you do have this little compartment that opens up and then you obviously have a glove box as well. And then the passenger side has the same nice materials carried over as the driver side. Now coming up to the top, you have a lot of different functionality. You do have a button that you can push to open up the rear window, which is nice to have to add a little bit more fresh air. But the other creme de la creme of the interior is pushing this button you open up the gigantic panoramic sunroof and it's got two stages. It opens up one way, then you push it again and the entire roof opens up. Now it does get pretty warm in this vehicle when you do that, but it is beautiful to have. I mean, I love seeing this on pickup trucks and then you actually can open this uh, and vent out the sunroof, which is really cool. The nice touch here, which is something I've never seen before, is the sunroof actually folds underneath the top portion. So typically the sunroofs will go over the rear portion of the glass. This one actually folds underneath uh, the existing portion, which I've never seen before. Okay, now as promised, let's talk about this giant infotainment screen. Now this is a 14 and a half inch screen, which is an option. Now I believe it comes standard on the platinum, but if you get the lower trim levels, it's gonna come with just a horizontal 12 inch screen. This one is vertical, very similar to the Mustang Mach-E. Now, if you guys didn't see the review, I did on that video, I will actually throw it up on the screen right now because I talk about some of the functionality of this software along with the traditional F-150 software that I talked about in my review of the F-150 Lariat. Now, focusing down here at the bottom, very similar to the Mustang Mach-E, this volume control is actually welded on top of the glass. It is directly attached to the screen, which is a really nice touch. Uh, but this bottom section is your climate control. Unlike the Mustang Mach-E, you do have heated and cooled seats. I think the Mustang Mach-E just had heated seats. You do have a heated steering wheel, just your typical climate control settings over here. Now moving further up, this is kind of your quick access button. So if you want to, you know, get to your radio really quick or your Apple CarPlay, which this does come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, by clicking this button, you know, it's going to kind of slide it up and that's where your quick access stuff is. Really a super intuitive system, very easy to use, not much of a learning curve. You do have, if you click this Ford F-150 Lightning in the corner, kind of pulls up your main quick access settings. So this is where you can hit your normal, your sport modes. You do have an off-road mode and it does make a sound. You know, you have your one pedal driving. So it does change the gauge cluster over here in the center when you change to the different modes. Lots of different settings here. You do have your one pedal drive. There's only really one level of sensitivity. Now, if I recall correctly, the Mustang Mach-E had multiple layers of sensitivity. This one just has one. We'll see how that is when we take it out for a test drive. This is where you can activate your locking differential, which automatically turns on when you have off-road mode. And then you can turn on and off a propulsion sound. To my understanding, there's only one version of propulsion sound. You 
can't like cycle through different ones like I've seen on other vehicles. You do have your 360 degree camera, uh, which looks absolutely fantastic. You can zoom into different areas and corners and uh, really just a very intuitive system. And you can get this on the lower trim levels as well. It's not just on the platinum. You do have something called the smart hitch, which will actually let you know how you should adjust the weight inside of your trailer. So once you hook a trailer up, you've got, let's say a lot of weight in the back. It's going to tell you exactly how you should arrange that weight in order to reduce the amount of sway and the risk of flipping the trailer or getting into an accident. Another really cool and unique feature that a lot more vehicles should come with is something called the onboard scales. Now what this shows you is up to the maximum payload of your particular vehicle, which is 1,650 pounds, it will tell you how much weight you have inside of the truck bed. Now keep in mind, it only estimates the weight of cargo and passengers inside of the cabin. But as an example, let me go stand inside of the cabin and show you that it's gonna show you my body weight. Okay, so I just watched the footage and it looked like the bar actually changed, but it didn't really show how much weight there was. So maybe I don't weigh enough for it to really factor in. Now the next really cool feature, and I gotta say this forward button over here has all of the cool features listed on this infotainment screen, but the next feature is the zone lighting. So by pushing this button, you can actually activate lots of different areas to light up the vehicle. So if you click on this power button, it'll actually activate, and then you can turn on different sections of lighting and so if you're say off-roading at night or maybe camping or just anywhere on a job site and it's dark, you can actually turn these lights on. As an example, let me show you where one of the lights are located. Over here on the back near the side step over here, this is actually a light that lights up. And the same goes for some of the lighting located underneath or on the side, I should say, of the side view mirror. So there's lighting all over this vehicle that you can activate at different points depending on where you want the light to be shown. Now, if you recall when we were in the truck bed, I showed you some of those power outlets. Well, I said there were more and there are. There's obviously one over here. There's some in the rear seats. There's some in the front. There's a total of actually up to 11 power outlets, 10 household, and then one additional 240 volt. But this is the setting where you can control all of the power. And this is where you can set the limit as to when you want the power to shut off. The next really important feature that's the talk of the town is this intelligent backup power. Now, if properly equipped, and if your home is properly equipped, you can actually power your house with your F-150 Lightning. Essentially what it does is it turns your F-150 into a power bank that you would typically use to charge like a phone or a tablet, but it does that for your house. You can use the energy stored inside of the vehicle to charge your home and power your home for what Ford says up to three days with the extended range battery or up to 10 days if you're really not using that much power. Now that may sound like a little bit of a gimmick, but keep in mind where Ford sells a lot of trucks is Texas. And last year, Texas had a lot of rolling outages. And so having this type of feature would be very helpful to have for when you have one or two days without power, you can still run the microwave, run the heater, and pretty much live a normal life without having to rely on a generator. The next fun quirky feature is this vehicle does come with massage massaging seats. Now the last feature of this infotainment screen that I want to talk about before we jump to the back is something called games. And you have just like a Tesla, lots of different games on here. You essentially move this vehicle on a road and try to avoid obstacles when you're driving. Nonetheless, nice to have a few different games on here when you're staying at a charging station and have nothing better to do. Okay, now let's jump to the back seats. And just so you know, when you open and close this door, it feels just like any other F-150. Same nice materials over here on this platinum trim, obviously, same hard touch plastic over here. You do have some cup holders, uh, no platinum logo over here, surprisingly, but the same really nice seats with the platinum logo located here. Now the second row is essentially the same as any other F-150. To be honest, I'd be hard pressed to figure out the difference here. This seat does fold up and reveal a nice storage cubby over here that you can use so you can unlock this open it up and you do have a storage compartment that you can place lots of different objects in and then you can just lock it in place and then you can lower your seat by just pulling on this tab over here. So exactly the same as any other F-150. You do have rear air vents, thankfully. You do have heated seats, but you don't have ventilated seats as an option. And then more of those power outlets located down here and your 120 volt adapter located over here as well. And then you have just a regular 12 volt adapter up here. You do have a little bit of a nice trim that kind of carries from the front for the rear, obviously rear cup holders. And then you do have a center armrest. Although I don't think this comes on every Every single model so you do have to I think get at least the lariat to get the center armrest overall a really nice second row lots of leg room and lots of headroom 
typical F-150 stuff. Okay, so as you can see in the video, there was tons of storage space in the vehicle, as is common amongst pickup trucks. But the one feature that's not very common amongst the pickup truck is a front storage compartment. Uh, yeah, this is probably the creme de la creme of the F-150 Lightning. One of the main drawbacks of a pickup truck is there's not really any sealed storage. Everything is kind of out in the open. Well, Ford has solved that issue with this frunk, and this is watertight, it's sealed, it's lockable, and there's lots of space here. This is actually about the same size as like a Honda Civic trunk space. It's 14.1 cubic feet, and Ford says you could hold up to 400 pounds of payload just in this front section. So you can put an air compressor, uh, you can put dead bodies if you want. So whatever have you, you can put it in there. Although you can't put any real live bodies because there is a button here that will automatically open the front uh, just like a trunk in traditional sedans. Now, the other nice feature before we show off some of the other things is it is power closing as well. So power open, power close, and that is a standard feature included on the pro version of the pickup truck as well. Coming into this section, I will point out a few more things you do have more pro power on board lots of outlets over here ford actually says you can get 9.6 kilowatt hours of power out of these outlets which is pretty impressive that can power pretty much anything you need it to now the only other item to really point out here is uh, as you open this up you do have a drain plug so you can fill this up with ice put some beers or some drinks in here and uh, this is actually large enough according to this logo over here to fit some golf clubs as well so you can put some golf clubs in there have a beer at the golf course and you can do all of that with your f-150 lightning okay now for the fun part where i get behind the wheel and show you the performance of the f-150 lightning okay setting off in the f-150 lightning platinum first thing you'll notice when you sit down is it feels just like every other f-150 really no difference whatsoever uh, just the fact that you know this is an electric vehicle. Now, as we hit this main road, I briefly want to talk about what different configurations you can get with this vehicle. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, you have the standard range battery and then you have the extended range. Now, either one of those, regardless of which trim you pick, let's do a quick acceleration. Oh, whoa, okay. That is uh, pretty quick. It's hard to tell on camera, but that is quick. Um, regardless of what trim you pick, you always get dual motors. So you always have all wheel drive. And I think this vehicle needs it because all wheel drive is necessary to put power on the ground for electric vehicles. There's just way too much torque. Now, speaking of torque, let's talk about the figures. If you get the standard range battery, you're gonna get 452 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. Now, again, that's on the sub $40,000 F-150. Now, if you upgrade to the Mac Daddy large extended range battery, which gets you up to 320 miles of range, that is gonna get you upwards of 580 horsepower and 770 pound-feet of torque. So regardless of which battery you pick, you're gonna get the same amount of torque, but you'll get more horsepower with this extended range battery. Now, let's see how it accelerates at 580 horsepower. Wow, it is incredibly quick. This is amazing. It's uh, very similar to the Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition that I reviewed recently. Uh, and let's talk about the numbers. Zero to 60 for the standard range battery is said to be just around five seconds. Now for the extended range battery with this one with the 580 horsepower, it's said to be just around four seconds. Now, I think those are underestimated numbers because I have seen some car reviewers get the standard range battery to around four, four and a half seconds, which would mean this one would probably be around three and a half to 3.75, zero to 60. So a sub four second pickup truck that weighs around 6,000 pounds. But when you're not really hauling and you're not pushing on the pedal, this vehicle is extremely comfortable and quiet driving down the road. It's very well insulated. I really can't hear much of what's going on outside, similar to the F-150 Lariat that I drove a few months ago that had the internal combustion engine. It really is a very, very quiet cabin. Now, talking about ride quality, uh, I can definitely notice a difference between this, wow, 
and a traditional pickup truck. I mean, that independent rear suspension really does make a difference. This thing rides like a large SUV, uh, a crossover SUV. In terms of proportions and how this vehicle feels when you're driving down the road, uh, it feels just like any other pickup truck. It doesn't seem overly massive, possibly even a little bit more nimble than like a traditional F-150 because your center of gravity is really low due to the position of the batteries located lower to the ground, kind of on a bumpy road. And again, it just drives like a traditional crossover. And that's probably the major selling point for people who don't drive pickup trucks, but want to drive this vehicle is this thing is gonna ride better than a pickup truck. In terms of the one pedal drive, uh, it takes a little bit getting to used to. Like right now, I'm not applying the brakes at all. I'm actually modulating the gas and the vehicle is coming to a complete stop. Okay, right now I had to apply the brakes, but it was coming to a complete stop all by itself. Just like anything else, it takes a little bit getting used to, uh, but once you get used to it, it's fine. I do think the Mach-E had slightly more functionality when it came to one pedal driving. Now I do wanna do one more quick pull here. Uh, obviously we're not on a racetrack, but I mean, I even got a little bit of wheel chirp there. This is an incredibly quick machine. Uh, there's not enough track, I should say, or road for me to test out all of the capabilities. I'd have to have this car for longer. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, this is quicker than an F-150 Raptor. It's quicker than my Hellcat. I mean, this is a very, very quick vehicle. And what's crazy is the pro version isn't really that much slower. Now, as we're pulling back to the dealership, another major advantage I wanna talk about when it comes to buying a Ford electric vehicle uh, as compared to like a Rivian or Tesla or whoever, is you do have Ford's service network. You know, I talked about this with the Rivian where they have to send out service advisors to come fix your vehicle if there's any issues. This, you can pull up to the hundreds of thousands of Ford dealerships across the US and get it serviced just like anybody else. The other thing that might help persuade you into the electric car revolution is the warranty that Ford offers on this vehicle. Uh, now it comes with a traditional warranty, I think the three year, 36,000 mile, but when it comes to your battery components, Ford offers an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty. Okay, so there you have it folks. That is pretty much everything you need to know about the 2022 F-150 Lightning. So how does it compare to the Rivian R1T? First of all, the Rivian R1T was a more luxurious pickup truck. There's no denying that. The use of materials inside the cabin, there were some more clever, unique things about that vehicle that the F-150 Lightning unfortunately just doesn't have. That being said, this is more of a pickup truck because the Rivian R1T had a pretty short bed. You weren't really able to haul a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, although it has pretty good towing capacity, it just wasn't as functional. Uh, it's more of a lifestyle vehicle, off-road vehicle. Uh, it's not necessarily a do-it-all type of pickup truck. Depending on what you're looking for, if you're looking for something a little bit more luxurious, more bespoke, go for the Rivian. If you're looking for something more traditional, more pickup truck-like, you gotta go for the F-150. Now, when it comes to my overall thoughts on the F-150, that's where it changes a little bit. Uh, first of all, there's no denying that the pro version, the sub $40,000 F-150 Lightning is an incredible steal. It's possibly one of the cheapest electric vehicles on the market. Comparing an F-150 Lightning Pro versus say a Model 3, you're looking at around $40,000 for the Pro versus about forty-six or $47,000 for the Model 3. I mean, this vehicle is way more practical than an entry-level Model 3, albeit a little bit less luxurious. So when you're looking at it apples to apples, I'd pick this over a Tesla Model 3. That being said, I don't know if I would pick this over a conventional pickup truck. And if you guys have stuck around the video long enough, you guys are probably interested to hear my thoughts. And I'm probably gonna be in the minority here because everybody is in love with this vehicle. And I am too, I think it's a fantastic vehicle. I think it's probably the best electric pickup truck on the market, just based on price point practicality. But I think if I was in the market for a pickup truck, I would want something that can do pickup truck like things, which is haul a lot of people, which this thing can do, but also tow a large amount of weight for long distances. And unfortunately, the technology is not quite there yet 
to be able to tow 10,000 pounds for over you know four or five hours. That just doesn't exist with the F-150 Lightning because its range is limited to about 300 miles and that's with absolutely no weight. So if you are strapping a 10,000 pound trailer to this vehicle, you're probably looking at anywhere from 100 to 150 miles of range, which just isn't sufficient for a pickup truck. And on top of that, you can't just stop at a gas station and fill up in like 10 minutes you have to put this at a parking lot and wait for eight to 10 hours to be able to go another 100, 150 miles. It's just not practical. That being said, not everybody who buys one of these vehicles is looking to haul or tow, in which case this is the perfect vehicle for driving around in the city, going to job sites that are probably within a certain geographic radius, and accomplishing a lot of interesting tasks because you have pro power on board, you're able to power your home with this vehicle, and at the same time have wickedly quick acceleration without really producing any emissions, at least from a tailpipe. But if you're looking for this to be the hands down best pickup truck you can buy, I don't think you're looking at the right vehicle. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I kind of took a little bit of a different approach near the end because even though this is a fantastic vehicle, it's not for everybody. And I think internal combustion pickup trucks are here to stay because the technology is just not there yet to replace them entirely. If this is your first time stopping by, make sure you hit that like button, tell your friends, and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly videos. Also find me on all of the social media down in the description below at Shwayze underscore. And as always everybody, I hope you all stay Shwayze, stay healthy, and have a Ford F-150 Lightning electric type of day. Talk to you later.